everyone welcome back ladies and gentlemen and of course gungans and all you fantabulous droids out there you're watching on old holonet news the only news you'll ever need because you have no other choice <laughs> today ladies and gentlemen we have our third new gungan on the block to kibberville for the one and only the gungan Mooma dear a new attacker for the gungans the this and the next gungan that we have we're going to be more just unnamed nothing special gungans but don't let that fool you. These guys have important mechanics to make sure we take the Gungans to the next level, baby. And we already kind of got like a little bit of a sneak teaser at what the, the last marquee Gungan is going to be. The, uh, the, the Gungan, what is it, Gary? Can we get a little Gungan translation here? Phalanx. One more time. Phalanx. Phalanx. And it's gonna look like this, it sounds like. This is kind of what I imagined when they said there's gonna be a Gungan tank coming. This is what I imagined, the Gungan with the shield, and we kind of already got a little heads up. That's what it's gonna be all about. So we will have this new Gungan Boomadeer this week, marquee event, Thursday, so I don't know, in case you, you need something to do, don't worry. Our video game division will be testing out this character. I wanna, in case you've been not keeping up with what's going on with the Gungans, we're two in right now. And already, I'm able to kind of like two-man a lot of pretty decent teams. With the third member, what can we see? I guess I have to wait and see. But I don't think we're going to see the a majority of the picture until we get this guy in the game. The tank is the most important thing because of that shield generator. But don't worry, the Boomadeer is going to be adding additional layers of plasma shielding to the shield generator. As you may recall, that determines how many stacks it takes before the generator is down. At base level, with just boss nest, it has 10 stacks of plasma shielding. Well, we're going to be able to add a couple of extra layers on top of that. So let's get on into it. Uh, this is something a little additional, I guess, before we get into it. I guess they're adding a little bit more Omicrons to the mix for this uh, marquee event. So if you are whaling, remember, there's really no need to whale the seven stars. The event has been very generous for the most part, at least compared to other marquee events. But... That tier seven award is going to be given uh, for Omicron. So, you know, just something to throw out there. Anyways, let's get down to business, my friends. Abilities, catch this. Basic ability right there. Deal physical damage to target enemy. This damage is triple if the enemy is shocked. And then you gain speed up for one, two. And I know, we, you know, there's still a lot of stuff up in the air, but our Captain Tarples has some shock capabilities on him. And this is very much so going to be... I don't know, like, it's gonna be debuff, <laughs> debuff heavy. It's, there's heavier debuff teams out there, but there are a lot of debuffs on this team already. So having this right here, triple damage. I mean, Captain Tarples is already showing some pretty decent damage with just him and Boss Nast. Having another attacker in here, you know what? Could be kind of interesting. Getting speed up is also nice. You know, more turns, the better, because we have other special abilities like this, the Cluster Booma. Tier three ability, cooldown of three, deal physical damage to target enemy, and you deal additional instance of damage for each offense down, defense down, healing immunity, speed down, present of the target enemy, maximum five. And these, a lot of these are debuffs that we can already apply with Captain Tarples as well as Boss Nest. And always deal five instances of damage to separatist enemies, which is Captain Tarples as well as boss nest i'm already kind of dunking on a lot of separatist teams there. i already took boss nest and uh captain tarples and we basically two man a general grievous team of course you know we don't have you know uh, the snap omicron to really see it but nonetheless still kind of impressive nonetheless and then you remove one stack of recharge from the allied shield generator per instance of damage now remember the recharge is different than the plasma shield uh shielding here the plasma shielding once that's depleted you lose your generator recharge is a bit different you kind of want to get through the recharge as fast as possible because remember when that plasma when that plasma generator can take a turn finally the shield generator i should say it's got like a basic ability that you want to utilize all gungan allies recover 100 protection gain 25 percent turn and have their cooldowns reduced by one so i think there's been a little bit of confusion and i completely get it. it's a new kit new design that we're still kind of working through right now but nonetheless removing recharge is good moving plasma shielding as of now, not really the greatest out <laughs> there. Moving on. Special to the horn of Otto Gunga. We have here deal physical damage to all enemies and inflict ability block for one turn. Septus enemies are inflicted with protection disruption. Ouchie wow wow. Which can't be copied, dispelled, or even resisted. Yikes. We don't really have many protect disrupts in the game. I know we you know Leia's got a you know a degree of it in her kit. But really, protect is kind of a unique thing. It's only going to work against Septus enemies, of course. Remove three stacks of recharge from Allied Shield Generator, and it gains two stacks of Plasma Shielding. So this 
is kind of nice because we still need to wait. We need to wait to get our Gungan tank in the game. That's really going to determine if this is going to be usable on defense, I suppose, because once those generator stacks are gone, you know, the Gungans kind of fall apart. But being able to have a way to regenerate additional stacks of the plasma shield and keep it around longer, I'm only going to imagine it's going to compound fairly well when you have a tank trying to protect your plasma shielding. You have a swap terminator with target other Gungan ally and boom a deer gains frenzy for one turn. Nice. And you're so able to get more turns back to back to back. You don't think of boss. You know, it's kind of, you know, Biston. I mean, <laughs> you know, Biston's not really the most relevant character, but nonetheless, you know what I mean? Trying to get him quick back to back turns. Then you target other Gungan ally gains accuracy up for two turns. You know, just in case you have, you know, deflection crons or dodge crons, they got you covered <laughs> with the Gungans. And we have this unique ability here and this <laughs> fantastic artwork by uh, <laughs> Meathead here. Unique ability. Uh, this will have, I actually, it's not in, I don't think it's in the kit yet. Uh, yeah, it's not in the kit, but this character will have a raid Omicron. Now, you know, I was, we were to kind of expect this, you know, boss Nass already has, you know, territory Omicron, you know, we're somewhere and uh, Captain Tarples has a territory battle Omicron. This is going to be a raid Omicron. Of course, there's a new raid battle for Naboo. So we'll learn more. Let's think of it like the scout trooper Omicron where, you know, we didn't know what it did until the, the raid finally came out. But we've been having discussions about this, you know, only 8,000 people or so, whenever we looked at it the other day, has a raid Omicron for Scout Trooper. Not really good. You know, they didn't, um, it could have been just be, you know, could have just be, been because of how the raid structure is and the, and the speeder bike raid wasn't really, I, I would say well received. That might be part of it. Where Bauchelet had 55,000, but I think a lot of people weren't expecting raids to be cycled out as often as they were. Hold their conversation. But anyways, Grand Army Special Zeta, and of course, an Omicron will be thrown on down the road when the raid does find, uh, finally show up. At the start of the battle, Gungan Boomadir loses 75% max health, gains damage, max protection. Shouldn't be anything too new. That was something we saw right away with Boss Nass. Incredible mod protection. This is a lot of nice benefits that we've been seeing. You know, it makes plague less valuable, makes damage over time less valuable. Anything that, that does damage based off max health, not as effective up against these characters like Captain Rex Arrow Advantage. Not really great against the Gungans that we've been seeing so far. Gungan Boomadir has plus 30% penetra defense penetration and offense. You can only assume it's going to be doing some pretty good stuff. But here we go. We got some additional synergies with that shield generator. Enemies defeated by Gungan attackers can't be revived. And so far, our attackers have been Captain Tarples as well as the Gungan Boomadir. And we don't know. I don't think we have any intel as to what Jar is going to be. My, my guess is Jar is gonna be a support character perhaps I, I don't know we already have two attacks on the scene it could be a third attacker you know jury's out on that we don't know yet uh whenever Gungan Boomadir uses this special ability we get five percent defense penetration offense stacking persists even through defeat for the rest of the battle and of course while a Gungan ally has retribution they are immune to target lock kind of an odd thing might be like what is this in regards to well Captain Tarples has this you know retribution counterattack thing and all that and target lock from Grievous would prevent said counterattacks I guess that's why they're baking it in there maybe we uh, I, I, if it's battle for Naboo I'd be a bit perplexed if you know Grievous is there you know and, but who knows what they have plans for the raid but maybe just in general they just want this to be a super hard counter to General Grievous even though we got plenty of those right now so there you have it you know i i would definitely say captain tarples boss nass have a lot more pertinent more important foundational stuff to this this is to this team i mean this is basically what i expect at the boomadier some damage out of it some additional things that kind of make things a little bit nicer it's great seeing that shield uh, generator the plasma uh, generator you know being able to recover stacks of all that but again at the end of the day this guy is gonna really determine the face of this team and, and of course maybe jar jar as well is gonna be something pretty big for the team but nonetheless, this, if it's not going to defend the shield generator well, this team is going to be very niche. But I have a feeling with the regeneration of the stacks, the Boomadir is bringing in this, I'd be a little bit surprised if we, they don't really give us adequate ways of protecting our shield generator. Hopping on over to the game really quick here, just to kind of highlight a few things here. With the Gungans, of course, you know, we mentioned a lot of the debuffs. I figured let's just bring them up again real quick. We have things like this, for example, where Boss Nass's intimidating order allows us to get lots of debuffs and there you go defense down damage over time healing immunity things that we already pointed out inside of the boomadier kit reveal that's where you're going to get a lot of your debuffs and of course you have captain tarples which has things like the assisting has things like the the retribution and whatnot 
on his kit. So, you know, we have, I believe it's on the basic. The basic has the shock, and this is actually a very nice buff to spell. In our initial review, I kind of said, in terms of basic buff to spells, for non-legendary characters, it's pretty good. It's very clever where you get the shock on, then it buff the spells, and then if things have a reoccurring taunt like Ben or whatnot, that kind of makes things a little bit more complicated for the taunts to reappear. So it's kind of a, for, assuming it's coded correctly, <laughs> you know, it's actually quite nice. So, you know, the team is forming up. I was really hoping to give us the tank first. That was just more what I was interested in, but that's kind of what we're sitting with right now. So I guess time will tell. I'll see you guys on Thursday. I think right now the team as it sits, you could probably use this in 3v3 on the offense. If I'm able to already beat, you know, in two versus five, I think as it sits, we could probably get something out of these guys now. But once you get a third character in, I think this team is actually kind of usable. You know, it's not like it's so far the Inquisitors where the Inquisitors were barely usable one, even when grand inquisitor came out before grand inquisitor not a very usable team with grand inquisitor eh, this team with just two and three eventually it's gonna be kind of interesting to see all this pan out but that's all speculation we'll have to wait and see maybe you know that's the, this tank isn't gonna really pan out maybe jar jar it's gonna be trash but you know what i'm all here for the journey with you guys thanks for stopping by hopefully you enjoyed your your time here at ahn on old holland net news Thanks for always stopping by. Leave that like, comment down below, subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And <laughs> Gary, I, I'm forgetting. Oh, yeah. Always remember how it's great to be in the Empire today. Great to be in the Empire today. The sun never set.